Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a, uh, a pattern I've had out for a long time called a Jumbo Juju. This is a coronamid for uh, still water fishing, um, typically in the springtime. Um, and I'm going to start with a the hook I've got here is a, a Daiichi 1760, uh, which is a two extra heavy hook. It's a little stouter than the Tiemco 2302. Um, and I like this because a lot of times in the lakes the fish are bigger and uh, having a hook that will hold up to, to heavier tippet and bigger fish is always a plus. Um, and what I've got on here is a 764th white brass or tungsten bead. Um, you can use either depending on, on uh, how heavy you want the fly to be. So I'll slide that bead up and I'm going to take some 10 thousandths lead wire and I'm going to make about 10 turns. And I'll break those ends off. And I'll push that lead right up in the back of the bead and kind of center the bead on it. And then I'm going to come in with some white seven, uh, 70 denier UTC thread. Uh, now 14 knot Vivas will work just perfectly here. Um, I know UTC thread is hard to get these days and uh, you shouldn't have to go chase down thread. Thread's a pretty common thing. Uh, the Vivas thread is a perfectly fine substitute. But what I did there is I started the thread behind the, the lead and just built a thread dam, just tapering up to the diameter of the lead. Then I can trim my tag out. I'm going to wrap all the way back down to the bend to about even with the point on the barb. And then once I get there, I'm going to build just a little nub at the back end. It's not very big. Uh, and then I'll let my thread start to unwind here, just to flatten it out a bit. There we go. And I'll run it forward again. Just up to the back of that, that thread dam. Now at this point, I'm going to tie a, uh, a brown and orange Jumbo Juju for you here. So I'm going to take three strands of brown super hair, set those aside. And I'm going to take two strands of orange. And you can do this in a variety of colors. You know, whatever whatever your primary color is is the three strands, and whatever your secondary color is is your two strands. Uh, so I'm going to take these two orange to start with. It really doesn't matter which which two you do first. But I'm going to take these two orange to start with, and I'm going to tie them in here, just behind the thread dam, or just even with the thread dam. So I'll tie those in and let those kind of dangle back. And then I'll take my three strands of brown. And I'll tie them in separately, sort of above the orange. Now what I'm going to do, and I'll try to do it up close here on the, on the screen, I'm going to pull one of them out, just to make things interesting. We'll tie that brown one back in again. There we go. So I'm going to get my three strands of brown, separate from my three strand, or two strands of orange, and I'm going to hold them separated as I wrap back over them to the bend. And I'm just going to make a nice smooth even thread base here as I go. And that's just to keep the brown in one bundle and the orange in the other. And I'll wrap back over those all the way back to the to the base of that nub. And then again I'll flatten my thread there. And I'll come forward again. Just creating a smooth white underbody. Um, again with all the all the jujus, anything you're tying with super hair, um, you want to use a white thread to tie it down so that uh, the color of the super hair shows through when we wrap it. So now I'm going to take all five strands here and I'm going to bring them around the bend and I'll come around the hook point and back again and I want this first turn to be pretty straight up and down. And you may need to rock it back and forth a bit and on this first turn you may even need to actually that is going to show really well for you. See how we've got those sort of spread out? You can tuck those back in with your fingernail or just maneuver them. Let's do it right. There we go. To get them to all lay flat. And you can see how I can kind of rock that as I go. There we go. To get those laying side by side with a wide brown band and a narrower orange band. And I'll wrap just short of the bead and tie all of those off several tight turns of thread and trim out the extra. So we've got a nice variegated body there. And then I'll whip finish my white thread. Trim that thread out. And I'll come in with some 
8 dot black. And again, 14 dot black is fine here too. And I'll move back about one and a half bead lengths, I guess is what I'm going to say. And at this point, I'm going to tie in a piece of medium opal mirage flash. And I'm going to tie this in right up on top of the hook. Like so. And then I'll take a strip of thin skin, and I've left this on the paper so you can see it. Um, it's about one half to two thirds of the hook gap. And I'll separate it from the paper. And I'm going to tie it in right up on top for our wing case. I want my thread to buckle that around the hook. And we've got a short thorax here. We're not going to build a very long thorax. Now I'm going to take some black superfine dubbing to build the thorax. And it's not going to take much. You can see we've got most of our bulk already built in here. Um, for between the lead and the tie down of all those materials. So we're just going to take a, a little bit of superfine and we're going to dub it on very tightly. And we're just going to smooth that thorax area out. So I'm going to go from the front edge of the bead back to the front edge of the wing case and forward again. And run out just behind the bead there. Like so. Then I'll pull my wing case, my thin skin, over the top. And I like to bring the thread up over the top and hold the thread up with the thin skin and then pull straight down to sink that and anchor it around the, the top of the thorax. And I'll pull my flash right through the center, tie it down with a couple turns, and then fold it back again. And now I'm going to come in and trim that thin skin out. And the trick to tip, trimming this thin skin off around a bead is to make two cuts, one kind of angled up on the near side and angled down on the far side with the very tips of your scissors. And then I can come in and just nick that flash out. And I'll just make a couple turns to cover that tie down and whip finish right up on top of there. I can trim that thread out. And now I'll come in with a red marker. Um, any old red marker you've got is perfectly fine. Red Sharpie works fine here. And I'm going to color that little nub back at the butt end red. And then I'm going to come in with some, some medium viscosity solar res, and I'm going to put a nice fat drop right on top of the wing case, like so. That was maybe a little, little enthusiastic, but I've got room for it. I'm going to use this, take that drop, and smear it all the way down the top of the body, all the way back to that nub. And I want to be down to either side of the wing case, even back up onto the back edge of the bead. just on the top surface of the fly. I've got a bit more than I want on there, so I can just pick up that extra and wipe that off. But I want that pronounced thorax. I'll smooth that coating out. And then I'll come in and cook him with my UV lamp. And to do that, I'm going to shine the lamp from you know 10 or 12 inches away. And I shine it on and off. Kind of rotate the fly as you go. Rather than what we've all done for forever is just hold the light down right close to the fly. That cooks the cooks the UV too quickly. So we want to kind of flash it on and off like this, and that'll give us a, a much slower cure, but a much stronger cure. And it adheres a lot better. And there is our finished jumbo juju. That is a big fat lake coronamid. Um, pretty good variegation on the body there. You can do black and white, brown and orange, uh, olive and brown, olive black and white is a good one. Um, any variety, gray is a good one as well. Um, I've tied them, gosh, I've got them in a hundred different colors in my box, but um, kind of a fun little fly, not hard to tie. Um, kind of a pre good precursor to the uh, uh, to the rest of the Juju series, just because it's a little bit bigger fly, makes it a little easier to see. But uh, that's kind of a kind of a fun one, and that's a great uh, springtime late coronamid pattern. So. Uh, my Jumbo Juju, thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.